This is Jackie, and I am here with Honor. Uh, we are hanging tight. It is March 20th, and we're all sort of all over the world dealing with COVID-19. Um, Honor, where are you located right now? I'm at home, same as everyone else. Uh, I'm in Scotland. Um, so yeah, just sort of hunkering down, really. I was meant to be in the States this week, um, starting some touring dates, but obviously um, it all got shelved. So, yeah, I'm at home, sort of, yeah, just hunkering down for the time being. So what are things like in Scotland right now? Are you um, what they're calling in the U.S. Um, self-distancing where you have to stay away from people or are you quarantined in your house or something in the middle? Yes, yeah, something in the middle, I guess. Um, everyone is very obviously very aware of social distancing and keeping themselves apart from each other. Um, I think that's kind of fairly universal, really, judging by the news and everything else. Obviously, it's a little bit easier in rural Scotland, I'm guessing. Um but yeah, it's uh, it's just crazy. I can't believe how immediately it's had an impact on absolutely everything. You know, um, I'm fortunate that I'm able to work in the studio here, um, and I'm being able to sort of keep writing and keep creating stuff. But um, you know, it's a scary time for a lot of people. You know, a lot of a lot of the people that I work with in Scotland, sound engineers and tour managers and um, people who work in the industry. You know, they're uh, it's scary times for them. They're not really sure how they're going to get through it. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's, it's just kind of hanging tight and seeing how it plays out, same as everyone else. How would you describe your state of mind right now? <laughs> um, it flips quite a lot, I, I think. I think everyone is the same. I think I go between uh, being very selfish about it and, and kind of considering my own personal situation um, and how it impacts on my career and my finances and my loving situation. Uh, and then I scold myself for that and I start to think more widely and how it's impacting on uh, the industry that I'm involved in and the wider world and the vulnerable people that I know. And um, and then I kind of forget about things for a while. You know, something will take its place. I get involved in writing a song or I'll get involved in um, whatever I'm doing. And I kind of forget that there's this horrible sort of lingering thing. I think the difficulty is that there's no real escape. You know, the things that I would normally use to escape from this kind of stressful situation, um, like sports or um, going to live shows or going to hang out with friends, those things don't exist because of this situation. So there's no real way of escaping it. I think that's what people are struggling to deal with. Um, but I'm just trying to kind of work my way through it. I'm just trying to get into the studio and make some good work. And I guess try and consider it as found time, you know, that um, I can use to try and do things that I wouldn't ordinarily have the time to do. I guess that's probably the most positive. I so how has it impacted um, your music as far as your plans for this year? Because you did mention it sounds like you have a tour that's cancelled. Yeah, massively. It's uh, the same as everybody else. You know, I, I'm relatively lucky. We squeaked in. Uh, we were on tour with, with Jake Bug in the UK. Um, and our last date was literally just before it all kind of kicks off in the UK. Um, so we finished that run and then I was due to go over to the States and do a little kind of promotional tour and that got pulled. But fortunately, it was nothing too, um, too kind of set in stone or too long winded. I mean, I'm looking at the acts that are playing South by Southwest. I know a few of those guys from this country. Um, and it's just carnage, you know, it's real chaos. I, I you know these guys are going to really struggle. Um, I don't know how uh, the industry sort of starts to deal with that, to be honest with you. I'm relatively lucky in that I can, I'm a writer and a producer as well as an artist, so I am capable of sort of working from the house a little bit. Um, but even then, I'm, just, you know, I'm starting to go insane the same way everybody else is, you know. Um, but yeah, it's kind of tough times. Uh, and your song uh, and the video for Human Enough just came out today. Can you tell us, especially new listeners, about kind of the meaning behind that song and the inspiration behind it? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it, it feels kind of weird putting out new music uh, in this kind of time, but I think there's been a little bit of an attitude change the last few days. I think people are ready for distractions. Um, and it's been nice, actually. The, the track went out today. It's been well received. Everyone seems on board with it. It's nice. It's, um, it's the second track for my new EP, um, which will be out in May. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a cool song. I, it's my first co-write. It's my first ever co-write that, um, that I released. Um, I wrote it in Los Angeles with um, Dave Bassett and Sam Hond, are two great writers. 
um, and it was produced by Mark Crew, who does all the Bastille stuff. So um, it was a really interesting kind of song to be involved with and something quite different from what I normally do. Um, so it's been fun. It's got an amazing video as well. We, we, uh, we shot a video in Los Angeles. It's very sort of Blade Runner, dystopian kind of feel about it. Um, so that was super exciting to see that come in. It was really, really cool. So it's been good, yeah. It's been nice. It's nice to you know feel like it's going out there and people are uh, enjoying watching it and taking a couple of minutes um, to kind of forget about everything else. So. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm sort of already at the point where I need to be distracted, so distract. Totally. It's totally fine. Um, some bands have begun live streaming from their couch. I think they're even calling them couch concerts, which I think is is lovely. Um, what are your thoughts of kind of how you want to go about sharing new music in these weird times right now? Yeah, it's kind of bizarre how, it's, how quickly um, that has changed as well. I, I've started doing some live streaming shows myself. Um, I put it out to my fans on Instagram as to what they would like me to do and I gave them the option of me sort of doing some studio stuff or if they wanted to just see me do stuff in my garden shed and it was all, almost unanimously uh, the garden shed um, so I'm doing that tonight actually uh, which should be fun I think you know I just again I think it's um, it's communicative it's people just want to feel like they're involved in you know something that has an element of fun and enjoyment to it um, and it's great. I, I think it will have a real sort of impact on, on musical art, uh, sort of artistry and things going forward because um, a lot of artists who wouldn't maybe have considered doing it before have been sort of forced into this situation and actually they're finding that fans are so receptive um, to feeling like they're a part of a wider community. So it's, it's been really interesting for me. I'm really enjoying it. It's good. Speaking of feeling involved, how do you feel involved when you're used to performing in front of a live audience. And while the audience is still technically live, they're not directly in front of you. You can't interact with them as much. Or can you interact with them even more now because of technology? Yeah, it's a little bizarre. I think the the severity, I think, is, is amplified because I've just come off of tour as well. So, like, literally three days ago, I was playing to, like, thousands of people. And then you're still playing to a lot of people, but there's a very different reaction. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, a, there's obviously a definite difference there and I think you have to address it differently. Um, the nice part of doing the live streaming thing is that, is that you can see the reactions come in and you can see people um, sort of reacting to what you're doing and suggesting you know, different songs or little things that you do, maybe picking up on silly things that you've done and you haven't noticed. And that is nice, I think. And, a traditional live environment, the subtleties of, of that kind of thing are completely lost. You know, it's all very sort of grand and big scale. Um, so I think that's one of the nice things about taking it down to that kind of level. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's been fun. It's, I've, I'm far more nervous doing the live streaming than I am playing live. Absolutely. That is one thing. I think most artists would agree. It's a good experiment. I feel like we've got to get creative in these times. Um, yeah. What do, what do you think brings you or gives you hope in these really uncertain times? Uh, I'm actually incredibly hopeful. I have to be honest with you, before this thing happened, I was less hopeful. <laughs> um, I think, I don't know, it, it seemed like such a very divisive time um, in terms of, obviously, we had Brexit here in the UK and you have Trump there and that's echoed the world over. You know, there, there are very wide divisions in society. And I think that bizarrely, this crisis has had a sort of unifying quality to it, um, where people are coming together and trying to help each other. You know, even on the street that I live, you know, I've been out handing in sort of notes to the neighbours, elderly sort of neighbours, just saying, look, if you need anything, give it a shout. You know, I'm seeing people out walking, sort of elderly people's dogs for them and stuff. And it does feel like communities have come together a little bit, um, which is really nice. I think that has definitely been lost, I think with the division that went before. I'm hoping it will remain um, when this all dies down, whenever that is. Um, and it, but it has been nice to sort of remind yourself that humanity is capable of sort of nice gestures like that, you know. We'll get out to humanity eventually. Do you have any plans that have been solidified yet for maybe the summer or the fall? Because Lord knows whatever is going to happen in the next couple of months. But do you have any plans that are solidified or is everything still up in the air at this point? It's, it's certainly changed things, um, which I think is true of everybody, but um, I have an EP out in May, um, that's still going ahead, we're really excited about that, we've got a couple of good songs still not released to come out on that, um, 
that I think are, are going to be really big for us and change things quite a lot, which will be great. Um, we had a couple of shows booked in for me. I don't know if those will go ahead, but we are booked in. We're booked in for Reading and Leeds in August, um, which, as far as things stand just now, is still going ahead. It's you know far yeah, exactly. It's fun. <laughs> um, so touch wood that that would be amazing. You know, I've, I've been to that festival a couple of times, and I would, you know it would be a dream to to finally play there. So. Um, yeah, we'll just take it as it comes. If there's more of a reliance on live streaming, if there's more of a reliance on releasing material between now and the end of the year, you know, compared to, to most people's situations, that's absolutely fine. You know, I can definitely deal with that. Well, we'll stay hopeful. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit and stay safe and stay healthy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, same to you. Thank you very much. Yes. Bye now. Bye.